Jamie Dimon warns that what we are facing is worse than a recession. Yes, folks, there is something worse than a recession. We will talk about that in a minute. We'll also talk about Jason Pritchard and a lovely event I participated in yesterday where we really highlighted what five economic metrics I think all real estate investors should look at. We will talk about that and more. Let's get to Jamie Dimon. Let's start with the meat of the discussion. Jamie Dimon has come out recently and highlighted, warned that we could be facing something worse than a recession. We could be facing something last seen in the 1970s. And frankly, folks, this is something that Anna Kelly has brought to the channel for the last year, and that is stagflation. Stagflation is frankly just yucky. Stagflation is an environment where you have dual cross currents that really mute or complicate the tools, the blunt instruments that the Fed has. Stagflation is an environment where growth is low, below trend. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be negative, but it has to be below trend. Think below 1%, possibly negative, but certainly below 1%, and an environment where there is high inflation. Think five, six, seven. Stagflation is problematic. It is, without question, worse than a recession. Yes, I've said it. I don't know that we're heading there, but I will agree stagflation is worse than a recession. Now, why is that? Well, the only way out of stagflation is you really got to slam the economy into a nasty recession or time and likely years of just being stuck in the mud. Think about the U.S. economy, consumers, businesses, government being stuck in five feet of mud. You could make forward progress, but it would be very exhausting, very, very tough to do. And that is, of course, because the Fed's tools of interest rates raising and lowering, when they go on that cycle, they will hurt one and help the other. So stagflation, if you really want to go back and study it, look at the late 70s. This is an environment uh, that uh, I lived through as a child. I only remember vaguely, but frankly studied quite exhaustively when getting my econ degree uh, because it was a unique environment. So I agree with Jamie Dimon that the stagflation is worse than a recession. I don't think there's any argument there, but I don't know that we're heading there. And again, I, I go back to something I've been carrying on probably for 18 months now, that a rolling recession is far more likely. And again, a sign of a rolling recession, just the latest sign is look at mortgages. Now I'm not referring to purchase mortgages. I am ref, uh, talking about the refi boom, which we correctly called on this channel 30 to 45 days ago. Refinances are up 94% two weeks ago, 106% last week. Without question, refinances are going up. Now, why is this a sign of a rolling recession? Well, folks, mortgage, without question, has been in a depression for somewhere between six and eight quarters. The mortgage industry has lost about 50% of mortgage originators. They are doing something else. And now, as the refinance business comes back, as second mortgages come back, as purchase applications might tick up, we will see the mortgage industry come out of a depression and quite possibly, quite possibly be positive for GDP. That is just one sign of an industry that went in deep and dark and now may be coming out of it while other industries go in. That is just one hopeful sign that we'll have a rolling recession. A rolling recession like stagflation, in my opinion, will be long duration. Think six, eight, ten quarters, right? Potentially more than two years. But it will be shallow. It will be long, but will be shallow. So again, it will be very interesting to see where we go. Uh, let, me, let me talk about Jason Pritchard's wonderful event. Jason Pritchard, as you know, is on my Mount Rushmore of Real Estate Investors. He was nice enough to host about 50 people at his house 
And uh, we just talked real estate. We talked um, economy, all of those things. But one of the things that I got feedback on is they really liked the idea of talking about what five economic metrics all real estate investors should look at. Now, again, I am not suggesting, nor do I think it's a good idea that you should become an economist. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but you can you can look at monthly or weekly numbers and just stay up to date with the general four. So I came up with these five economic reports that if you only watch these five, you will have a fair interpretation of the complexities of the United States economy. Now, again, I don't know that I would look at these five in all economies, meaning all cycles. But right now, where we are in this cycle, inflation coming down, Fed cutting, worried about jobs, these are the five that I gave them. So number one, I would look at the Thursday, Thursday morning, weekly unemployment claims. Right now, I think last week we came in at 230, before that 228. We've been bouncing around the 230s. Now, again, what I told the audience yesterday is, hey, just look at it and watch the trend. That's all I want you to do. You don't really need to care about the number. Just is it up or down from last week? And then, of course, what I want you to do is trend that over three or four weeks, right? Are we going up? Are we going sideways? Is it bumpy? That was number one. Figure out what's going on with weekly unemployment claims. Why? Because the Fed has clearly told us that the most important uh, mandate now is jobs, jobs, jobs. They kind of declared victory on inflation. They are now focused on the dual mandate with a slant towards employment. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to watch, again, this is a real estate audience. I want you to watch on Wednesday's mortgage applications. Again, we have already called the refi boom and correctly so, but watch purchase applications. I think last week they were up 2%. Again, we are not worried about the numeric number. We are watching trend. And why do we want to watch that as real estate investors? It's an early sign of demand. Is demand pulling back? Is demand growing? It will likely be the first report that highlights the marginal demand that I have warned disappeared comes back to the market at what rate? So number three, again, as a closet economist, what you would want to watch is what's going on in the overall economy. So I suggested watching retail sales. Again, we have seen over the last 18 months that consumers are scared, but still spending. So what I suggested you would do, this is not a weekly report, unlike the first two, it is a monthly report. Uh, again, watch retail sales. Is it up? Is it down? Where is it going? Number four, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk inflation. We get three reports with two, two metrics each. So we get four, eight, we get 12 things to choose from. So what I suggested they look at quite simply is PCE core. PCE core year on year was the number I recommended they look at. Again, you get CPI, PPI, PCE, all of these things. What I recommended for, again, the closet economist, just PCE core. Again, all we're trying to figure out is up, down, or sideways. And then again, of course, number five, something that I have called is for the existing home sales to tank, fall, collapse to below the latest bottom, which I think is 3.89. I said we're going lower. It actually gets reported this week. More on that later. But I said, watch existing home sales. Again, what you are looking for as a real estate investor is, are we bumping along the bottom? Are we slowly climbing out of this abyss? Or has the government done something or rates done something? Or has the move up buyer come back? Marginal demand. Again, a monthly report, existing home sales. So again, there are hundreds and hundreds of economic metrics you could look at. If I was a real estate investor just trying to keep my pulse on the economy, those were the five I would do. Weekly unemployment, mortgage apps, retail sales, PCE core, and existing home sales. Let me give a shout out to some brand new school students. Yes, folks, the school community is growing. I am so happy. We keep adding more and more value. More and more people are joining. So here's the list of folks that joined in the last 48 hours. Karen, Theo, 
Gina, Roman, Ronnie, Mark, Sherry, Dustin, Rick Tavian, and Ab Dooley. Thank you for joining school. Make sure you introduce yourself. Make sure you watch the 10 week boot camp, the buy box, the creative financing. Join all the accountability groups. We are here to serve. We are here to grow the middle class. I am getting very, very comfortable voicing those words. That's what my mission is to grow the middle class, to show you it is possible to motivate you, to get you focused. That is where we are going. And my school community is all about that. Feel free to join and get on the platform. So where was deflation? So folks, we've talked about inflation. We've talked about uh, disinflation. That is inflation going up slower. And now we have deflation. I actually looked at the CPI report in more detail. And we actually have a, quite a few things in true deflation. Did you know apples were down 13.9%, potatoes down 6.6%, rice down 3.1%, cheese down 1.7%, fuel oil down 12.1%, gasoline down 10.6%, used cars and trucks down 10%, men's, men's suits down 9 TVs down 5 and toys down 3 What does all this deflation mean? Well, I think there's a couple of things that you can take from deflation. A, or one, it is in the goods portion of our economy. Goods. And in the goods portion of the economy, that is where the supply chain was disrupted, destroyed, injured, whatever, and now seems to be healing itself quite nicely. So the goods deflation is real. Unfortunately, in our economy, it is mainly a service industry. In the service industry, it is still very much inflation. We do have some disinflation, meaning inflation is going up slower than before, but there is very little, if any, deflation occurring in the services economy. Next up, it is Sunday, so we have to talk about the week ahead. What are the most important economic metrics? What will I be looking at? And most importantly, what is my Fed call for Wednesday? Stay tuned for that. I kind of dropped it on the Friday wrap up, but uh, in case you missed that, it is an important day and I'll share with you that in a minute. Number one, starting tomorrow, we will get on Monday manufacturing survey. Our U.S. manufacturing economy has been in a recession territory, meaning below 50, seemingly for 12 to 15 months. Are we finally building our way out of that? Is it going or are we still in recession territory? Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Remember, this is one of the reports I said was most important for the closet economist. Retail sales. As I recall, I could be wrong, but I believe retail sales last month surprised to the upside. I want to say it was up positive 1% where expectations were negative. I could be wrong. Don't hold me to that. You can look it up. Type retail sales. You'll see it. Uh, and also, we'll get home builder confidence. I'm curious. Have home builders gotten more confident as rates have fallen? What are they doing? All of that. Wednesday, we will get the FMOC meeting, the Fed meeting. We'll get rate decision. We'll get commentary. We'll get all of that. I have now come to believe that Wednesday, Wednesday is going to be important. Uh, I do now believe either at this point you will get a 25 or a 50. And as I sit here today, I have no clue which one we're going to get. But I believe the following. If the Fed cuts 25, 25 basis points, they are concerned about the economy. If, if the Fed cuts 50, they are scared. Again, if they cut 25, they are concerned. If they cut 50, they are scared. Now, that's an important twist. A scared Fed probably is not good for the markets. The market may have a momentary bump up, you know, cheap money, yada, yada, yada. But I think the market will quickly realize that an outsized first move by the Fed is not what they want. It's kind of one of those be careful what you wish for scenarios. If they come in with a quarter and they paint the picture that they're willing to do more, again, that is probably net positive for the market because it's showing concerned 
awareness and being prepared. So I have no clue what they're going to do, which is very unusual. Usually I step out on a limb and make a call. No idea. What I will say is either they are concerned or scared, and we will know Wednesday afternoon. Then on Thursday, we will get existing home sales, and this might be the report. This might be the report that says, nailed it. It was about two months ago that I said somewhere in the next three months, we are going to set a cycle low for existing home sales. We got really, really close last month within 10,000, but I do think we go lower. The current call is for 3.88. If we get the forecast, I will be right because the cycle bottom to date was 3.89. And I called us breaking below that. I think it will actually come in lower than that, probably 3.85. But hey, anything below 3.89 and my call from a couple months ago will be proved right. And then, of course, on Thursday, we will get the all important weekly unemployment claims. Are we still down at 230? All of those things are we going up? So, uh, a couple of things about rates. You may hear these things called the neutral rate. You may hear something called R star. These are all kind of gobbledygook for what is a rate of interest that doesn't expand or hold back the economy, constrain the economy. It is a fictitious number. It is a number that is never really known. It is a number, frankly, that changes all the time. Right now, the smartest economists, business folks believe that our star or the neutral rate is between three and three and a half percent. I have no idea. Let's assume they are right. What does that mean? That means the Fed has roughly somewhere between 175 and 225 basis points, or better said, seven rate cuts to nine rate cuts that they could do to take them from their restrictive stance to neutral. And I do believe that will be a very important conversation by Jerome Powell on Wednesday is, are they going to talk neutral rate? Are they going to talk less restrictive? And again, I'll say it again because I think it's important. Is the, Fred, is the Fed concerned or scared? That is a very, very, very important thing. And we won't know until Wednesday afternoon, uh, and I'm going to be here for it. Uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. I got some other stuff, but we can talk about it. Uh, oh, let's do this. Claudia Psalm. Claudia Psalm, Psalm rule, all of that. Uh, she did come out on Thursday, an article I read on Thursday, saying the Fed must cut. The Fed must cut 50 basis points because the unemployment rate is about to rise. Remember, my number one metric you should be watching as a closet economist is the weekly unemployment. That is where you will see it first. If Claudia Somme is right, what you will see is likely the elevator. Unemployment typically takes the elevator up and the stairs down. If Claudia Somme is right, uh, that's what you will see. So again, folks, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope to see you join school. If you do join school, introduce yourself. Uh, if you're coming out to Vegas, let me know in the comments below. I think we've sold 81 tickets. I want to know who's coming to Vegas. Leave comments below. Uh, we got a lot of stuff planned. Um, it's uh, it's going to be one of those events. You got to get in front of people. You got to meet people. You got to network. You got to celebrate who we are as a community. Uh, the One Rental at a Time community is special. I hope to see uh, 400 plus of you out in Vegas in February. Take care of yourself. I get to talk to five school members today. I get to talk to five school members today, which I am super excited about. Those videos will be coming out over the week. And uh, take care of yourself. Have a great day. Later.